Hey there, are you ready for our next riveting experience? Well, buckle up, the fun and excitement is about to begin. Hi folks, my name is Pat Moore, the uh, channel is More Sporting, and I really appreciate you stopping by to see what we've got going on here. Today we're going to try painting this little lure here because it's raining and miserable outside and I don't feel like fishing, so... Um, well, I always feel like fishing. I just don't feel like fishing in the rain. Anyway, this lure here is um, a lure I bought off of Amazon. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. I don't even know if it has good action, but I enjoy painting them. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, and that, that uh, profile right there just screams sunfish to me. So we're going to try and paint these guys in a sunfish pattern. And uh, I will probably give some of these away at the local bass tournament. So if you're one of those guys watching this video, you know, keep your eyes peeled. I might be giving some of these away. Uh, let's hope they turn out all right. I've, I haven't done this uh, particular pattern before, so I'm just going to, you know, shoot from the hip. So stick around. It'll be fun. All right. So the first color that we're going to do is um, pearl white. And I usually start with a pearl white. A lot of people start with an opaque white to uh, lay down a nice base coat. But I like to have a little bit of translucency so you can see through the bait. So we're going to start with uh, pearl white. It's uh, not entirely opaque. It has some translucency to it. And uh, I'm just going to give a, a light coat throughout the entire thing and a pretty heavy coat on the belly as well. And what I find is if you put, if you give it just a little bit of a, a, a light white coat on the, uh, on the lure here as a base, it makes your colors that you're trying to get to uh, look bright, that makes them, makes them pop a little bit better. So um, generally speaking, starting with white is a good place to start. And if you're wondering, I'm using an Iowata Eclipse HPCS um, airbrush, and I typically spray around 40 pounds. And you can go lighter on the, on the air pressure if you want, but you have to uh, thin your, your paints a little bit more if you're going to do that. Now I'm going to paint up a whole bunch of these, so I'm not going to make you make you sit through all that. Um, I just wanted you to know that I'll be painting up a bunch of these. Okay, we got the white on there, and I'm sort of torn whether I want to do yellow next or blue. Um, I think I'm going to go with like a transparent blue color. So when you're doing these, you kind of have to think about how you're going to lay down the paints. And I'm going to be dusting the, uh, the yellow on top of the blue. It'll help if I put this up where you guys can see it. So I'm going to like paint the entire surface here. You can see there's a lot of blue areas in here. Sorry about the printer <laughs> malfunction there. Uh, it's, I'll get by. Um, I'm going to paint this whole section in here kind of a blue color. And then I'm going to come back in and mist the yellow. And then with a the stencil, I'm going to put some random dots in here with some yellowish colors. And then on the back, we're going to... Uh, we're going to put paint in a dark greenish brown color. And then I think in some of these photographs, the, the fish did have a slight barred look. So they had lines on it, not because the printer's malfunctioning, but because that's a natural thing on the, on the fish that they have some bars. So I probably will do that as well, just to give it a hint of that. Um, but I think my next step here is to put in a light blue over the entire surface here. So let's do that next. Okay, so I think that the paint that I've decided to start with is this Folk Art Color Shift uh, Aqua Flash. And yeah, I'm not using Createx paint like everybody else in the universe. But uh, my local store has Folk Art paint, and I find it to work just as well as the Createx. So that's what we're going with. I do have a lot of Createx colors, but uh, we're going we're gonna to do this color next. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That's a nice color. All right, let's do the rest of them. All right, so that's what that little guy looks like after we put that blue on there. I think that came out all right. 
All right, so the next color we're gonna do is the belly here, and that's gonna be a nice bright yellow. Okay, so the color we're using is Createx uh, Bright Yellow. It's a transparent color, and we're gonna use that on the belly. It looks uh, reasonably close to what we got up for a reference. I think it's a nice color. We could go with that. Okay, the next step is we're going to use this pattern to create these speckles here on the on the fish. So they're almost in a line in a lot of cases, but I'm going to ignore that <laughs> because I really like the pattern that this gives us. Now, what I'm going to do is because this pattern is, is really wide open, I'm going to double it over so that when I'm spraying through it, I get a, an overlap. So we'll get a lot of little, uh, little dots going on using this pattern. And we're going to have to mask these guys off. And I'm going to do three of them to start with. <laughs> just in case I really hate what I'm doing. As far as the color that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna go with this uh, Folk Art uh, Honeycomb, which is also a metallic uh, gold color. And yeah, I'm using a little bit of artistic license in here in that I think that these, these dots look a little bit darker than what we have down here on the belly. And everything else is kind of metallic on the fish here. So we're gonna add the these gold specks in. And then before I pull the, um, the mask off or the the uh, pattern off. I'm gonna I'm gonna spray the top dots on the on the back a a darker greenish color, and I'll probably use this dark color um, uh, gloss finish. What's it say here? Uh, Dragon Flash is what uh, folk art calls this. So we're gonna use that uh, for the for the dots along the top along the back, and then we'll finish it up with either this or a uh, or well probably a little of this and some really dark brown on the top as well. So that's kind of what we're going to be going with. Looks like we only got about uh, three colors left. Let's, uh, let's get spraying. All right, when you're spraying these, what I tend to find is that when I'm spraying a color in there, I... I need to be pretty heavy handed because not a lot of pigment actually gets into those areas that in the in the mesh. So um, being a little heavier handed is usually good. So let's let's give this a whirl. It might be it might be horrible. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, as promised, the next color is going to be uh, this Dragon Flash dark green color with some gold metallic in it. That should help uh, give it some zip, huh? All right, and again, heavy-handed when you're doing this through mesh. All right, we're going to do a scale review or a scale, a pattern uh, reveal here. And I want you guys to think, is that going to be a muddy mess? <laughs> it looks like it from um, just the uh, stencil here, the way it's sprayed. But I think it's going to be OK. I hope it's going to be OK. Let's take a look at it. Maybe the holes are going to be too small. I don't know. We're going to have to take a look. I don't know. It looks okay to me. <laughs> Pretty good to me. Ah, we might, we might go with that. Dark in the top. Put an eyeball on it. Put the uh, the gill spot on it. I kind of like that. Now the question is, do I want to put a stripe on it? Hmm. I don't know. What would you do? Would you put stripes on it? 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just add a little of that green to the to the top, just to, to give it a uh, darker on top look. This blue green color. All right, so next color that I'm that I'm using is this color that I mix up. It I use it, I just take all well, the extra stuff that I have in my airbrush and I often just throw it in here and it keeps me uh keeps me stocked in brown. So, um I generally don't like the idea of putting black you know, pure black on my lures. It's just not a very natural color. So a really dark brown is my is my go-to color. And I'm going to put just a little bit of this on the very top of each one of the lures. Okay, now the next question is, do I put stripes on it? What would you do? Let me know in the comments down below. I think I'll probably do... Uh, at least one of them with stripes just to see what it looks like. Okay, now you can paint these stripes um, with a comb. That's a really common thing, uh, way of dealing with it. But um, I, uh, I actually cut my own stencil specifically for this. So that's a stencil that I cut. You know, it's pretty much, it's pretty much a comb, just a little bit wider. All right, let's try putting some uh, put some bars on this. And I don't want them very dark. What do you think? I think that's pretty dang cool. like that that's pretty good yeah I like that what you like better with stripes without I like it with the stripes all right now we got to put this here a little ear thing here on the on the sunfish and uh I'm going to use some opaque black and I'm actually mixing just a little bit of uh, opaque blue in there with it. Um, and this is one of those situations where I am using pretty close to black, but what I'm looking at, if you look here on the reference material, look at the top of that fish. It, I know it's darker on top, but it's nowhere near as dark as that ear. So you really need that contrast in order to make that ear pop. And that's why I'm using black at this point as opposed to uh, along the back of the, of the uh, fish here. All right, so I'm just gonna, and you know, a lot of people use this, use a uh, stencil to do this, but I find that maybe, maybe I just have a steadier hand than most, I don't know. But I find that it's just as easy to paint it on with a brush and a lot faster. To dry that off before I do this, but you know, I'll leave it on the edge. Oh yeah. Now I will also, in in a lot of these cases, people will put a speck of white and a speck of red, probably do the same. Certainly I'm going to put a little speck of red on there just because it gives it some, some zip that sells the fisherman more than it does the fish, I think, but I think it looks cool because I'm one of them suckers. So um, I'll probably do that also. And let's just set this aside and go on to the next one. Okay, the coup de gras. Let's put that on there. I'm gonna do this little red spot on here. Oh my gosh, that sells it, doesn't it? But okay, the next step is gonna be to put eyes on it and put the clear coat on and I will share that with you this time.
Okay, time to put some eyes on these. Now I use a uh, Gorilla Super Glue, it's the gel kind. Just put a little dab on there and the center there, and then we're going to pluck one of these eyeballs on there and stick it on there. Now, uh, these eyeballs obviously do come with adhesive backing, but uh, I don't know anybody who trusts it, so. Now, those are like super bright eyes and probably not all that realistic, to be honest with you, but they stick out, and I like it when the eyeballs are, are overly obvious, so yeah, I'm going with them. Okay, well, good morning. So I let these sit overnight because I like to keep them. I like to make sure that they're really dry. It helps improve uh, problems with uh, fish eyeing and that sort of thing. So I like to have them completely dry. And a lot of people do a mid coat on this, but I don't see any point of a mid coat because the mid coat's generally the same um, chemical makeup as the as the paints that I painted with. So I tend <clears throat> tend not to do that. Um, I use a Alumalite UV Cure. Um, I like this stuff. It seems to work pretty well. Um, I know that there's a pretty good uh, quality control from Alumalite, so uh, that's what I do. And I also brush this on, and you can see I'm not overly concerned about um, getting it on there really smooth because it self-levels. It's not getting enough uh, UV light to... Um, thicken up until I put it in my UV tank so it's gonna it's gonna self level and there's no nothing you can do about that it will do it <laughs> because uh, it just remains uh, in its liquid form so um, a lot of people say well I don't want to brush it on because it's you know I don't want to see brush strokes and stuff in my lure I always spray well when you're using UV resins, you don't have to worry about that they they self level and they do a really good job of it. Um, now, this is pretty, it's kind of cold out in the shop right now. I do have a heater running. You might be able to hear that. Um, and that helps with uh, the viscosity of the, of the resin. I, uh, I like to have it a little warmer than it's currently at. And I will probably hit this with the, uh, with the hair dryer or something similar just to make sure it's good and warm. And, and so it levels best, but, um, yeah, that's, that's just a personal preference. You guys can, can, uh, do your thing as well. I always paint the bills because when you're buying, uh, um, the more inexpensive lures, they tend to have some blemishes and paying the bills almost always gets rid of that. <clears throat> All right, now I make these little hangers that I use to, to hang them in my uh, UV tank. And <clears throat> I always turn that UV light off when I'm putting it in there so I'm not subjecting my eyeballs to UV lights. Now we're going to go on to the next one. Okay, let's uh, let's pop them out of the UV tank here and take a look at them. Hopefully, we're fully cured. It's been almost an hour, hour and ten minutes. I don't know. I was doing something else. Um, and they come out uh, dry to the touch and ready to be fished with. There's nothing else you have to do. Now, if you're having some, if you have some interest in in coating your lures with UV, I will do a video on um, how to set up a UV tank. But uh, yeah, that's what the that's what the lures end up looking like. Now I just got to put hooks and stuff on them. 
Okay, let's talk about what hooks you want to put on a lure and why. Uh, generally speaking, I try to follow the specs that the manufacturer provides. I'll give you a, a rough idea of what uh, what hooks to put on what lures. And there's, you know, basics on that, or, you know, hookup ratio and, and weight distribution and, and angle of the lure during the action and all that good stuff. So I try to follow the, uh, the specs, but... Uh, I suppose a large percentage of the time I just stick the lures next to it and go, yeah, that looks like the right one to put on there. <laughs> that doesn't look that doesn't look too goofy. I'm gonna go with that. Um, but one of the other things that I do, um, I, I have quite a quite a bit of experimenting that I do with some lures. This is a deep diver, so I'm probably going to use the the spec that the manufacturer uh, gave, which is these guys right here, um, and. Um, you know, I may even be going a little bit heavier than than they um, than they spec, just because I wanted to dive, right? And one of the things about this lure that you might notice is that the back of the lure doesn't taper down. Well, it's not tapering down because that wider back on the on the lure actually helps um, prevent the lure from um, moving in this direction when it's when its action is going on. Uh, the 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 line is coming off at this angle, right? So it's gonna try to pull the, the lip up, but having a, a wider base on the back uh, also helps keep it pointed slightly down. So you could put a heavier, a heavier hook on the front here and a smaller hook on the back and you might get better uh, diving. So that's one of the things that you could look at when you're choosing which hook to put on there. Now, if you're, if you're fishing with another say uh something like this depending on the weight distribution and this has got sliding weights in there to get better casting but um depending on that weight distribution you may want this lure to to sink slowly at, a, at an angle down or you might want to sit perfectly level after you've given it a, a jerk right so if you want it to be zero buoyancy, you probably want it just to sit like that. And if you want it to sink a little bit after you've, then you're going to want it to be slightly down. And the less, the least likely scenario is that you want it to, to sink tail down because they don't do that, right? Uh, no fish does that. It doesn't care how sick it is. It's going to go head first. So, um, that's some of the things that you should take into consideration when you're trying to, to decide what hooks to put on, on your lures is, um, sure, follow the manufacturer's spec, but if you, want to, if you want to tweak the way that the manufacturer initially thought that the lures should work, then obviously you can, um, you can tweak things around. And the other thing that I want to point out is you can use different size O-rings um, you'd be amazed at how much of a difference uh, a big O-ring versus a small O-ring, uh, depending on the front and the back, how much that affects the lure. So I have a, a different lure similar in shape to this, but a much, much smaller bill. And I will use that as a jerk bait. And if I put in a large um, O-ring on the front with a large hook and a small hook on the back with a small O-ring, that guy will float perfectly level. And that is not how the manufacturer specified those hooks to be put on there. So, you know, use a little bit of artistic license when you're choosing which hooks to put on your lures. You might find that you can get uh, a great deal of difference in its performance by doing that. All right, let's put, let's put one of these on here. It's pretty much is going to be the end of the, of the uh, video. Um, if you like what you saw and it helps you, please like and subscribe and share this with all of your good buddies on all your social media platforms, you know, all the stuff I'm supposed to say if I'm trying to grow my channel, I'm, I'm trying to say that. So uh, if you have any questions, another thing that really helps is if you post a comment down below, that would be very helpful. Not only to me, but you get your questions answered too. Now that looks like it's a little bit larger hook than maybe what we needed. But you know what? I think I like it. I'm going to see if it dives better that way. We're going to test it. Go out on the lake and test it.